What is he saying here? He's saying that we've got to love Jesus more than anything else. He's confronting our affections. He's confronting our idols. Idols is not, idols are not term, another term that we use very much. Tim Keller talks about idols in his book, Counterfeit Gods, and this is his definition of an idol. What is an idol? It is anything more important to you than God. Anything that absorbs your heart and imagination more than God. Anything you seek to give you what only God can give. An idol is a good thing that's been elevated to the ultimate thing. And the first thing that Jesus goes after, the first idol, is family. Because in Jesus' day, everything revolved around family. If my dad's a carpenter, I'm going to be a carpenter. If my dad's a fisherman, I'm going to be a fisherman. I'm not going to be a lawyer if my dad's a carpenter or a fisherman if he's a builder. You know, I, I'm going to follow in the family line. I'm not going to go live in another town because everything revolves around the family. There's a large house. My cousins live there. My aunt and uncles my grandfather lives there, and if I get married, I'm not going to go live in another town. I'm just going to add on to this house. That's the day and age and the culture that Jesus is living in. And so he's speaking to that, and it's scandalous. It's offensive. In our day and age, we deal with the same problem, although we don't live in a big house with all of our family necessarily. For us, though, it might be that we idolize our children and everything is about our kids and about their ac extracurricular activities and giving them the better life, a better life than, than we had. And there's nothing wrong with that. But when we begin to worship our children more than Jesus or worship our marriage more than Jesus or worship the idea of marriage, if you're single, wondering and hoping for one day that you'll find the, the spouse that will fulfill all of your desires, everything that you need, You'll be whole and complete if you could just find that person. And if you've been married longer than a day, you know that that's not true. <laughs> that won't happen. Um, so Jesus is confronting this idol, and he's saying that in comparison to our love for Jesus, we must hate the people that we love, which sounds bizarre. But he's saying we have to love him with everything. There are no scales you know, you've seen this pie chart with like God has this much and family has this much and all this other stuff. Actually, God's like, no, I own the pie chart. Jesus is saying, it's all mine, all your heart, all of your mind, all your soul, all your strength. Okay, so that's what he's saying. Second idol he goes after is in verse 26. If anyone comes to me and does not hate, jump to the bottom, even his own life, he cannot be my disciple. Can you think of a culture that exists uh, that, exists that uh, exalts individuality above everything else? Where people are searching for whatever can make them look better or feel better at all costs, floating from relationship to relationship, from job to job, from marriage to marriage, from church to church, looking for their own individualized, personalized, tailor-fit experience. Can you think of a culture like that? 